After we have chewed food and salivary enzymes have partially digested it in our mouth, it must be swallowed and eventually moved to our stomach. To do this, it passes through the pharynx and the esophagus. The pharynx, often referred to as the throat, is the muscular tube behind the tongue, between the nasal cavity and the esophagus. It is part of the digestive system as well as the respiratory system. And the esophagus is the long muscular tube that carries partially digested food from the mouth to the stomach. Here we'll label and describe some of the parts in the area of the pharynx. The nasal cavity is the area behind the nose in which air enters and leaves the body. Here is the soft palate. It is the back, non-bony part of the roof of the mouth. Here is the mouth where food and air can enter and leave the body. Here is the tongue. The uvula is a soft piece of flesh at the back of the soft palate. A sample of food that has been chewed and is ready to swallow is sometimes called the bolus. The epiglottis is a flap situated above the trachea. It is made up of elastic cartilage tissue. When a person is not swallowing, the tip of the epiglottis points upward. The trachea is sometimes called the windpipe. It is the tube that carries air from the pharynx to the lungs and back. It is open to the pharynx and less swallowing is taking place. At the bottom of the pharynx is the top of the esophagus. There is a ring of muscle surrounding the top of the esophagus called the upper esophageal sphincter, which keeps it closed when a person is not swallowing. Now we'll take a closer look at what happens when we swallow some food. As the tongue moves up, it pushes the bolus back, and the uvula moves up and temporarily closes the nasal passage. This prevents food from entering the nasal passage. Now the bolus triggers nerves that make the trachea push upward and the epiglottis moves downward. The epiglottis covers the top of the trachea to prevent food from going into it and the top of the esophagus widens to let the bolus pass into it. As the bolus goes down into the esophagus, the epiglottis moves back upward, opening the top of the trachea and allowing breathing again. The upper esophageal sphincter contracts to reclose the top of the esophagus. Now we'll watch the whole swallowing process again. Now that the bolus has entered the esophagus, it will gradually move down the esophagus toward the stomach. The muscular walls of the esophagus contract in a wave-like manner which travels down the esophagus and pushes the bolus toward the stomach. This wave-like series of contractions in tube walls which pushes material through a tube is called peristalsis. Peristalsis occurs in many parts of the digestive system and is responsible for pushing partially digested food and waste materials through the system. Mm -hmm.